kind of turned on its side. Um, there are two other galaxies in here. There's that one, which is, uh, and there's this little satellite galaxy there also. Uh, and all of these stars are in our Milky Way. So we're inside of a galaxy like that. We're looking out. It's sort of like you're in a forest and you're trying to look out at the fields and the trees are in the way. So we have all of these pesky stars that are in the way um, in our own galaxy. But that big thing is rotating around. It's about 300, 400 billion stars and an, an additional gas and dust that weighs another three or four hundred billion stars worth of stuff. You can see some of the dust lanes in here. And it's rotating around. The other point I'd like to make is telescopes aren't only distance machines. So we're looking two and a half million light years away. Light travels uh, six trillion miles in one year. So your homework assignment is to multiply six trillion times 2.5 million. And you'll get the distance in miles. But, uh, so we're looking two and a half million um, years into the past, and in fact this galaxy is 180,000 light years across. So what you're seeing here is 180,000 years younger than what you're seeing back there in this particular image. So we're looking at immense distances, but also immense amounts of time into the past. The uh, uh, Milky Way and this galaxy are heading right at each other. Mm -hmm. um, and in about four and a half billion years, they will crash into each other. We'll have a special program at Copernic when that happens. Yeah. So anybody who wants to buy tickets today will be glad to take <laughs> the money. And you can come up in the four and a half billion years. And you really don't want to be around when that happens. Which galaxy is larger? You're, you, you don't want to be around when... Which, so, ga which galaxy is larger? Um, that is, uh, um, every six months they change their mind, but uh, um, um, they're about, about the same size, and the current feeling is that the Milky Way is a little bit larger, but I really think this one is larger. I think the latest from last summer was the British and Australians mathematicians calculated the dark matter, and the okay. Milky Way is, is in fact larger according to that. Yeah. Oh, I see. But it'll change. Uh, that's, uh, we're, we're always improving what we know about this stuff. And these little, these two little galaxies here are in orbit around this one. They're, uh, um, and we have a couple that are in orbit around the Milky Way. There's a third system in our local group that's called uh, M33, but I don't have a picture of that. The Andromeda gap. It's in the constellation of Andromeda. Um, if it was clear tonight, amazingly, and we had no moon, amazingly. You can actually go out and see this. It's the most distant object you can see with your naked eye. Really? Can I say no, naked? I, I can say I naked, naked, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is our uh, six-inch astrophysics refractor. And here it is, big, long, it has a lens in the front, six-inch lens. It's pointed at the moon. And uh, we use that for sun, moon, planet images, but it'll take star clusters and other things. And, uh, uh, the moon image that's over on the back wall over there was taken with this uh, uh, telescope. Uh, these are made in, I think, Minnesota or somewhere. The guy who makes them is actually older than I am, and he makes a few at a time. And if you want an astrophysics refractor, you have to wait 10 years to, just to get on the waiting list. So basically, if you don't have one, you're not on the, the recent production list, you're probably never going to get one. And we're very, very lucky to have this at Copernic. Everybody said, why do you want this little six-inch telescope? Well, it's very nice for looking at things like the moon. And this was taken with a DSLR. It's the image over on the wall over there, which you can take home, buy and take home and have on, on your own wall. This is the best picture of the moon I've ever taken. I just lucked out with the air turbulence was perfect. Everything worked right. It all worked together, my DSLR on it. And we could blow this thing up forever and see all kinds of little itsy bitsy detail in here, uh, um, which unfortunately I can't do tonight. But Can you that's see where moon our landings? Ask, pardon me? Can you see moon landings? Where, where will they um, you, cannot, you can see the areas, but you can't get down to the resolution of where you could see the, like the flag on the moon or whatever. You have to be a lot closer um, for that. One that 
You like astro imaging? You can do it yourself. Um, this is just a Canon DSLR and a tripod from like camp up the Adirondacks. That's Indian Lake. I've looked, seen that view for almost 40 years now. And there's the Milky Way uh, going through there. And there's a dust lane for the Milky Way. And all the other stars in the Milky Way that uh, uh, just put it on a, on a tripod, did a 20 second shot. Um, and actually that's three or four 20 second shots. There's my annoying neighbors over there. Did you have to use a tracking system? or? Uh, you, you, it would be a lot better if you had used a tracking system, but I did not for 20 seconds with a wide angle lens. Um, if we blew this up, you'd see the stars are slightly tracked, but uh, um, at this resolution, you don't notice it. And uh, um, again, uh, um, this is blurred here because these are multiple images that I've lined the stars up and put them together. But you do better with a track um, where there's gas and dust blocking our view of the stuff behind it. And that star and this star cluster are putting out lots of ultraviolet light. They just formed. They just emerged from their cocoon and this dark stuff. They're putting out lots of ultraviolet light, and it's making all of this hydrogen gas glow in a very deep red. Uh, um, and that's what that is. Glow. It's grow, glowing like this, um, what you have in a neon sign. Uh, it is not reflected starlight. Gas is actually glowing. Here's another picture of it, um, and this was, i got to work in colors a little bit better. Uh, this is with the FLI uh, CCD camera, and it was actually uh, um, brought over to the observatory by the FLI guys. It was one of their laboratory cameras, um, and a member had a hundred, that's about four inches, a hundred and four inch refractor. And we stuck that and the camera on the side of our 20 inch telescope to track the sky. That's about four hours of imaging uh, um, mm. through various filters under on a full moon night. It's hard to believe that we we're just testing it out that it would work. And it's really really incredible. That star has died, the core has collapsed, the outer part of the star is escaping outward. Um, and although this has died, it's still really hot and cooling down. And it's putting out lots of ultraviolet light. It's making the hydrogen gas glow red and the oxygen glow blue-green. Uh, back in about 100 years ago, when they first started getting this blue-green color, they didn't know what it was, so they called it nebula. Some, some chemical, some element that's out in space, we don't know what it is. Then we found out it's actually oxygen, and it glows like that if you can get it in a vacuum much lower than we get here in our uh, nebula. And, uh, 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 this little star cluster, we call it the trapezium, but there's actually like six or eight stars there. That just formed out of this glowing gas cloud, part of the Orion Nebula. And uh, it's producing lots of ultraviolet light, and it lights this whole thing up. But it's all star forming region. Hubble Space Telescope above the atmosphere that works in infrared shows up to 10,000 stars being formed in here. And again, this material is not, um, it's not where there's no nebula. It's where the stuff is closer to us and it's uh, um, cold um, and it's blocking the view of the glowing gas behind it. And this gas is actually glowing because of the ultraviolet light coming from here. It's not reflecting starlight. Globular well, Star Cluster M3, this is one of our images on the wall over there that you can buy and take home. This is just a couple of months ago. Um, it, this is a big pool, called the Glob, star cluster, volt stars. These are maybe four times older than our sun. So you're talking 12, 13 billion years. Some of the second generation of stars go back very early in the universe. And those maybe a half a million stars in a cluster like that. And they're all in orbit around the common center of mass. And they're really old. If you were in there, you wouldn't know about the rest of the universe because uh, um, your sky would just be filled with tens of thousands of stars brighter than the full moon. You couldn't see out. Um, there's a famous um, um, sci-fi um, um, short story called uh, Nightfall, that you might want to look up and read about people living in a, in a star cluster 
and once every thousand years they can actually see the stars, they all go crazy. But there's nobody in there because these stars are so old, they're only hydrogen and helium. Can't make anything but uh, but gas gas balls on them. Hydrogen and helium, so nobody in there took my picture the night that I took. There's maybe, we know of about 150 of these that are in orbit around the Milky Way, so if you think the Milky Way galaxy is like your dinner plate, these um, globular star clusters are in orbit around the Milky Way, and there's a, we know of about 150, which means there's probably another 150 that we can't see because our view is blocked. Um, Colliding galaxies, M51, sometimes called the Whirlpool Galaxy. And these are two galaxies that, all, that just passed each other um, um, in, the, in the recent past, um, probably 100,000 or more years ago. Uh, this spiral galaxy is, uh, um, looks kind of normal. It, these are little star clusters that have formed these little blue blobs. Some red blobs in there that are more of these of gas um, clouds that are forming new stars. And then there's this disk thing that doesn't fit anything with uh, uh, galaxies. The reason it's all screwed up, it didn't go through a mix master. It ran past this galaxy and got all tore apart by this galaxy's gravity. And this light here, that's actually stars thrown out of the galaxies by the gravity of this one. It'd be kind of neat to live in a, in a star in one of these things. You would have only a few stars in the sky, and you have these two big fuzzy lights that will be these galaxies. They will dance around each other over the next two million years, and eventually um, coalesce into a single galaxy. You can see some of the dark uh, um, uh, <coughs> dust and gas in here, and there's some dark dust and gas lanes through here. And then we got more galaxies in the background. There's one right there, and there's one right there. Much, much further. There's another one. So uh, this is on the order of 13, 14 million light years away, and these are 100, 200 million light years away. So we're really starting to push into the past. There's a question about this. Wait, and kind of looking at it the side. Um, looks like a spiral galaxy, but it doesn't really have spiral arms. It has these spiral segments. And again, you can see blue, hot blue star clusters that have just formed. In the center, these are old stars. There's no star formation in there. And why it has segments rather than arms is a open discussion in astronomy. Um, we didn't know, and it's one of those areas to work on. And all these other stars are in our Milky Way because we're looking at them. like the blow away. We actually do some science at a, um, at Copernic. In addition to using these images to teach astronomy, like I'm doing right now. Um, that's a supernova. It's a star that exploded, and it's in this galaxy M66 in Leo. Took the image in June 10, 2016. Supernova SN 2016, 2016 COK. Um, if we went back and took a picture of this galaxy right now, that would be gone. Or if we had a picture from 2014, it wouldn't be there. That's a star that. About 2% of stars, when they reach the end of their life, actually blow up. And I really like things that blow up. But uh, um, th th that's one right there. And to give you an idea of what explosion, all of these other stars in here, there are a few galaxies in there like that one. But all these other stars in there are in our Milky Way. They're anywhere from 10 light years to 1,000 light years away. And this galaxy, we're talking, uh, um, it's... Uh, about 50 million light years away. So there's a star a thousand light years, there's a star 50 million light years. So that thing is 50 million times brighter than that. So a titanic explosion. You don't want to be around anywhere near a supernova when it goes off. Um, that would probably last about six to nine months. <clears throat> I like taking pictures of the spiral galaxies because I live in one. I'm a spiral galaxy chauvinist. I don't have a lot of pictures of, elliptic, of elliptical galaxies, even though about half of them are. But the interesting thing here is this head is this bar. It's a barred spiral galaxy. And w what causes this bar, we're not sure. It's another area of active research. And uh, um, if you go to the um, 
astronomy groups, well, you know, astronomers go have fist fights outside over who's right and who's wrong. Our Milky Way galaxy is a barred spiral. The bar is not that long, but we live in one of these things. Um, and again, the, you can see these Blue blobs are new star clusters that are formed, and some of the red things are gas clouds that are forming new stars. And I overexposed the center, so I got to go back and redo this. And we have some trouble with our telescopes, so that's why you got the fuzzy stuff around the stars. But there's another distant galaxy there, and there's a couple more in that image. But uh, how many stars are approximately in a galaxy like that? Um, a galaxy like that one will run in the order of uh, um, 100 um, billion to 500 billion stars. And uh, um, since there's lots of ga gas and dust in spiral galaxies, you can add, you can double the amount of mass um, in gas and dust. Um, the really gigantic uh, um, elliptical galaxies are in the trillions of stars. So, uh, uh, and somebody asked me how many galaxies there are. Um, the ones we can see are probably several hundred billion, and we can only see so far out. So we can see part of the universe. The rest of the universe is too far away to see because the light hasn't gotten to us yet. So we're still waiting for it to get here. Uh, uh, so we can only see a small part of the, the universe, and the assumption is it's the same all over the place. Um, this is not a very good image because I wasn't really, I really didn't want to, that's noise in our camera because I didn't have a long enough exposure. This is with the old camera that um, besides, but um, I took this primarily to pick up another supernova. It was uh, in the uh, late 1500s, and uh, um, it's easily bright enough to see during the daytime, lasted for about a year that you could see it. Uh, there was one in there with little satellite galaxy, the Magellanic Clouds, um, in, uh, um, I don't know, 1980s, I guess, 1990s. Um, I really um, keep a, uh, a valid passport because with my luck, the next bright supernova will be in the southern sky. We're due for another one. It'll be quite dramatic when it happens. Uh, uh, very rare and beautiful Some event. Scientists think that Betelgeuse and uh, Orion children will go supernova sometime soon. In the next soon. that soon is the next hundred thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it could be tonight. Uh, we call this thing the bubble. Have you looked at it? It looks like a bubble. Again, we're looking at gas clouds, star formation, but, uh, and all. It hasn't actually exploded yet. It's called a Wolf Rayet star. And they were two Mexican astronomers that first discovered this stuff about 100 years ago. And that thing is so about ready to blow up, but it hasn't. And it's, um, it's like throwing off all of this material. And the material is going out and shocking the gas around it. So it kind of blows this blo bubble in space. These are pretty rare. I only know of like four of these that you could easily see or image with our size of telescopes, but it's a very interesting phenomenon. The rest of this is just glowing gas and uh, probably behind this thing, um, star formations. You can see some columns of material, shock wave there, or some stuff is coming out. Um, I know that star is probably the one that's putting out the ultraviolet light, making all this glow, but it could be this guy also. Um, that's got to be a foreground star. Um, the, the difference in color, that's a really hot, hot, hot star, and that's a really cool old star. So it's probably closer to us uh, than all of this other stuff. But uh, again, uh, um, what does all this mean? Again, is, is being studied by astronomy right now, and we're learning more and more as we go forward. Uh, um, uh, this is another one of these gas clings. This is like the Pac-Man nebula. If you see this from a distance, Looks like a big Pac-Man munching away, and there's his eyeball and so on. Um, the reason I threw this in here is it was taken in H alpha. Uh, th this is actually a very deep red color. It's the glowing um, hydrogen, and uh, uh, on our camera we have a two-inch filter is about 800 bucks, but we have a filter that lets through just this one color, 
and uh, um, it really makes the nebula pop, really brings out all of the uh, view of it. And I just left it in black and white, you know, mm -hmm. or six stars, mm -hmm. easily with your is. naked eye right now. You can go out there, they look better in binoculars. For a small telescope, you can see 200 stars, but you can see seven with your naked eye. The Japanese call this the Subaru, and you, you'll find that star pattern on the front of Subaru automobiles. When I was in college, they said all of this blue was what was left of the nebula this was formed out of. Now we know that's bogus. That's not true. The star cluster has just kind of drifted in front of some gas and dust that's far behind it, and that's reflected light off of that dust. So it's just occasionally, like, stuff just happens, um, you know, random kind of stuff, and that's what that is, and we're just lucky that it's there. And if you look in binoculars, and you see like haze, it's not your binoculars are screwed up, it really is the haze, so you can kind of see that visually. So that's in Taurus the bull, in the V it's to the right, it looks like it's the heart of Taurus the bull. You Very easy it. object to see, uh, um, again, naked eye or through binoculars or through a small telescope. And since George is giving the discussion, George gets to show one of his own images. <laughs> everything else here, everything on the wall, was done at Copernic with Copernic stuff. Um, this one was done by me with my telescope, my five-inch refractor, down at Cherry Springs in Pennsylvania. So I get, since I've given the presentation, I get to throw in one of my pictures. That's my uh, picture for you. You want that?